Hey everybody, this is Eric Carroll with Dad Talk today. I am sitting here with Mr. Mike Kelly. Mike, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Great to be here. Great to be with you. I'll tell you what, your, your subject is absolutely critical. Yes, sir, and I, I thank you so much for interviewing with us. Can you tell us where you run and what you do? Yeah, I'm in Pennsylvania 16, which is right above Pittsburgh, along the Ohio line, all the way up to Lake Erie. So, uh, nice, big area, big area. City at the top, city at the bottom, and all ag in between. So, right. it's, it's really great. The rural area is so strong. Thank you so much. You know, uh, we talk a lot about the fatherless issue. We've got a epidemic going on. I feel like it's one of the number one things going on in this country, and we don't hear much discussion about it. Uh, what are some of your views on that? Well, I, I think the most important part of any child's life, when a guy meets a girl, they become husband and wife, and then they become mother and father. Their, their purpose, they should be driven to do something. Raising children, raising children. And when you don't have that combination, it's the child who gets hurt. And so we look at this evolution since about 19, maybe around the 50s and on down, we started doing subsidies to non-nuclear families. And what I mean by that, it was hard to get subsidized or get any type of help if you weren't a single parent family. And the idea to me would be, why don't we do things to bring families together, to keep them together, Absolutely. especially in hard economic times. You have got to have that entire structure, a strong nuclear family to raise children the right way, to get them to where they need to be, get them the education they need, get, get them to their churches and their faith-based uh, beliefs, that's what families do. And when we separate them and break them apart, there should be no, nobody should be surprised by what's been taking place in our nation. Right. You know, and it's, we know about the subsidies that's been gave, the incentives to get the father out of the home. And we know some of the laws that got that in there. What are some things that you think we could put in place to try to put that back together? You know what? It's going to be difficult right now because of the, things, the way things are structured and the right. way revenues are, are handed out. But I, I think that more than anything else, we have to go back to the idea that, look, that central, that nuclear family is absolutely crucial. I, I think one of my biggest missions right now is getting people, conservative people, to look at running for school boards. Our public schools are, there's nothing more private, I think, than our public schools, and textbook selection, curriculum. Uh, we don't get a chance as parents to question that, but how do you get back to the nuclear family? I think parents raising their children today and establishing very clearly what your roles are as you grow up and as you as you mature and you get into these relationships you have a tremendous responsibility not to yourself anymore but to your partner and your kids as you're raising your kids that's the biggest responsibility i think we have as human beings absolutely representative kelly i'm from erie pennsylvania so i uh, i'm very familiar with the state uh, i'm not there right now but i know a lot of the issues and a lot of people there and there's some very interesting stuff going on in Pennsylvania. I'd love to talk with you maybe at another time because we don't have time right now. But you've stressed the importance of the nuclear family. And uh, there's two things that are involved with this. Number one, when family formation does not take place. Number two, when families get fragmented unnecessarily in many instances. Because divorce, um, at times it's necessary, it's always traumatic to the children. But many times it's not necessary. And, in, and actually in Pennsylvania, there was a case, Panko v. Panko, that was in front of the Supreme Court this year, trying to address the Pennsylvania Family Code. Um, I may have to talk with you more about that later on. But I've been watching Pennsylvania because at one time you used to have a longer waiting period for divorce, then it went to two years, now it's one year. And that seems to be going against the idea of a strong nuclear family because there are many people that can keep their families together with more time. And when you have unilateral no-fault divorce, family destruction is an immediate consequence. There's no, it's a predetermined outcome. There's no defense. So is there anything that you see as far as the fatherless issue? Because fathers get kicked out of the house, as Eric has been saying. Yeah, well listen, you know, so much of this policy is put in place, and I'm not sure that there was a, a, a deep enough look into what it is that we were doing. And right. what, were we, what were we destroying foundationally? Right. Uh, you know, maybe a good idea at the time, then just, wait a minute, whoa, 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 this is terrible. This does not do what we need to do. And I always thought that, you know, if you can do more to keep a nuclear family together, isn't that better than a policy that stresses you have to be a single parent right. to get a lot of these benefits? I think that's not the way we should be looking. I think we should be looking just the opposite. Take a look at those programs. Say, let's not make a determination based on whether it's a husband and wife, a mother and a father. Let's 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 say we need to have that whole group together. The nuclear family is the key. Now, I think all the things that we're losing right now, that's where it comes, especially and in the faith-based community. You know, let me ask one more question if you don't mind, because the idea of parental alienation, uh, Eric talks about a lot, but Brian Bizarro is a Democratic mm. state representative. Yes, I know Ryan. And, and what I want to say is that the issue of family crosses every political boundary. 
it crosses every ethnic boundary, it crosses every sex boundary, it crosses every age boundary because if you find a situation where one parent is shoved out of the child's life, it's not just the parent, it's usually the entire family. Now, you have grandchildren, I'm assuming? I do, we have 10. My wife and I have 10 grandchildren. How, how would you feel if all of a sudden they said, I'm sorry, we can no longer see your grandchildren? Well, you, you and I both understand Erie, and we both understand there's no stronger family in Erie than the Bizarro family. Absolutely. So, I, Absolutely. From a man who comes from one of the strongest nuclear families I've ever had the pleasure of, uh, of having yeah. association with, it's like, well, how did you get to this? Yeah. Because it's certainly not the way you were raised, it's right. not the way you were brought up, and it's certainly not what your family believes. Right. So I think people get torn apart on policy by the party that they're in, and they're told, you either go along with us or you get out of the business. And I think that's the saddest part of all. Yeah. You've got to be able to stand up and fight that fight for the best reasons in the world. If you yeah. can't fight that fight, drop out. Yeah. Yes, sir. And Mr. Kelly, I believe that we need to get married. Marriage is so important, and we've lost the focus on that. Over half of the marriages in the United States right now are ending in divorce. I think we're around a 55% divorce rate. Uh, both are best, and I would like to see intact families. Unfortunately, sometimes divorce is happening, and then we're taking two people that can no longer get along in the marriage, and then we're putting them inside a family court to talk about the children, the house, the dog, what, what happened. Have you and we're seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars spent in family courts fathers that are fighting tooth and nail you know there was a narrative a long time ago a lot of fathers used to leave the, the home after they would have the children that's no longer the narrative now but it seems like it's still stuck there and these fathers are fighting tooth and nail to be in their children's life and sometimes they feel like what can I do? It seems like there's a, a huge bias inside the family court right now. Could you address Well, I, I think the bias exists because we have programs in place, and the only way we can keep programs moving is by keeping them funded and having people on board with that. I, you know, I've always thought that the greatest privilege you could ever have the great, in your life is to be able to have a child. Right. It is just the nearest and dearest thing, and it's just your heart. But then it comes down to, okay, Okay, that's great. Let's keep that family together. Let's make sure we can do what we can do. I'm, you know, I, I would rather see more counseling to keep people together than to say, Let, let's find another another way for you to separate. Uh, look, we, we face a real culture crisis right now in our society. We better go back to the old norms. We, we, we got it a little bit everywhere. It's in entertainment. Families are breaking up. Uh, just real quick, one thing that we've been trying to do around the country is we're trying to get some type of legislation passed, like shared parenting, that if mom and dad do get a divorce, mom and dad start at equal. And that should be that way. I think it pr uh, promotes co-parenting in it. It just starts them at a level playing field. Would you support something like that? Yeah, I think anything we can do to make sure that the child has the best experience growing up, and you do have to have a father and a mother. You have to have both those figures in your life. So if we can do something to blend it, even in the worst cases where people's lucky we just can't stay together anymore, still find a way to make sure that the central, the central feature in all these things is the child. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Mr. Kelly, can you tell everybody where they can keep up with you? Listen, I'm in Pennsylvania 16. Uh, I, I, you know, I have a card on me, but I won't get out right now. Please take a look online, Mike Kelly, uh, Pennsylvania 16. And I'd be, well, I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to get your opinions and stay with us. We got a heck of a fight in our hands right now. We just got to make sure we wake up every day with the same purpose, and that's to win. Absolutely, Mr. Kelly. Thanks. So nice it's to meet you. Thank you so, so much. I'm so, so glad right. to meet you. See another eerie guy. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. Everybody, stick around. We'll be right back.